Hey everyone, this is the AZ GTI. I have it disassembled, obviously, right now, and some other mods. I'll get to that later. But um, one of the problems with this that seems to come up again, I see in forums and stuff, is that this screw, I guess, isn't of the best quality. Mine actually came stripped out. You can kind of see the silvering and the small threads just like rip, rip uh, right away. And. That means you can't really tighten it much, so you're going to get some, uh, you know, your your clutch is going to be, um, you know, like loose. Because you can't tighten it that much or your screw strips. Um, which kind of sucks because if you're clumsy like I am, you're going to end up hitting it in the night and it's going to be off. And then everything's thrown off. you have to realign it. Well, it has if you had the one with the dual encoders, I guess it shouldn't matter that much. But, um, I don't know. I just... Uh, I think it's a terrible design. Well, actually, the design is probably pretty good. Um, this is very small, and hopefully this piece of metal in here, which is the actual clutch, which you can kind of see in here, um, just says collar, and it pinches. Basically, this screw, there's threads on this side and not on this side, and this is a shoulder bolt. Um, you screw it in, and as you screw it in, this actually helps force the two sides together by pulling it, and then the shoulder pushes this side. And the threads pull this side, and then it pinches the central pivot point. Um, hopefully that metal in there is of better quality than this. Um, if that stripped out, we'd have a little bit harder time fixing this. But I like Plan Bs, so if that ever did happen, I could probably dremel out this little point here, get a lock washer behind it, I mean a lock nut, and then continue using this fix that I've developed, which I'm going to go over now. Basically. I don't feel like ordering and waiting for one, another one of these just to strip it again. So I'm just going to set that aside. What I ended up doing was taking some M3 metric threaded rod and just kind of chopping it to a certain length. Um, and then you just thread it in there. It's a little tricky because it's not aligned when you do it. And that's my cut end, so actually let me put my nicer end in there. This is a little bit higher quality bolt, I'd imagine. If not, it's always easy to replace. So you just want to screw it till it pops up on this end, so that's utilizing all the threads it can. And there we go. And then I got this little, I think it's called a capillary tube. Uh, just a stainless steel tube. It's got a three millimeter inner diameter, a uh, four millimeter outer. Um, they make five millimeter outer diameter. That'd probably be better, but then I don't think this channel in here that's drilled into this can support it. I could probably drill it out more, but you'd have to take out the RA gear so it doesn't get mangled in there because it's right underneath this screw. So this should do for now. It's not expensive. Um, just yeah, just three millimeter inner diameter, four millimeter outer diameter. Um, and then you just, you know, you put it in there until it's up against the collar there. And this part needs a little wiggling. You can actually just put on a bolt and you know, not. I was confused those. And really kind of wiggle it as you do it. And then just make sure it's docked up against this piece here. And then you would just mark it and cut it, which I've already done. These come in like foot long sections, both of these, so you just cut it uh, as flat as you can. You can see mine's a little discolored from being cut by an angle grinder that wasn't set up for cutting at the time, so a lot of friction, a lot of heat. Um, probably mess with the metallurgy a little bit, but whatever, I don't care. Um, I 3D printed this little washer just to give me a little standoff. I measured that afterward, so really what I did was I... Okay, get that back off there. Oh, it's pulling that out and everything. All right, well, never mind. I, um, I put on my locking mechanism first, then measured the distance and printed that. 
you could probably stack up some washers around there if you don't have a printer. And this is a little nut I made with a little heat set um, brass fitting in there. There we go. Um, so I just printed it and heat set that in there. I think a little wing nut or thumb screw nut or whatever would work for you. Uh, instead of this if you didn't have a printer. So then I just made sure my spacing's all good. And you can just put this on there. And now if we look. Oh, you know what? I'm on my washer. That would explain a lot. Yeah, you need a little washer, otherwise nothing's going to happen. It's just going to try and liberate your uh, heat set from your 3D printed part. Alright, now there's a washer, and it's going to push this sleeve into this side here, which in turn will try and force it together and pinch the central pivot. Now, it doesn't need much. Now you can just see if it gives it a nudge. And I can't really move it easily like this. But if I back it off just a little bit, now all of a sudden it can turn. So that's the, the that's about as much as you need to put your original screw in there. But if you go too far, it just strips out. Well, with this, it's a little less likely to strip out. A little bit better thread uh, metal quality, I guess. I guess this is just junk. It'd be nice if they... You know, they're going to make this custom bolt. They would have made it a little bit nicer. But, um, you know, this is what we have to deal with. I tried looking for a shoulder bolt with this kind of length and this kind of threads, but I couldn't find one. So that's why I decided to do this. Um, yeah, this could be a wing nut for you, and this other little spacer could just be some washers of a different size. Um, it can get so good that I can't really turn it, even with a... In fact, I can give it so much um, lockdown power that it can actually trigger the the motor to actually use its little spring, little backlash spring. So you probably don't need to tighten it that much, but you can. If I did it with this, it would just rip right out. So yeah, that's my fix for that. Um, I'm going to do some other things to this. I took off the battery case. I don't really like the battery case. I'm just going to plug it into, like, my big battery, which um, is right here. It's a much bigger battery, so I would just use that because I always take it around, and that's my tripod weight. And um, so I don't use, like, AA batteries because they're kind of expensive in the long run. I have rechargeables, but I would just rather, you know, if I'm going to pull this around with me, I might as well just use that. So, what I want to do is put my polar alignment camera attached to this plate somehow. Probably extend it down a little bit. Um, and then have my power splitters up in here because I hate having just like a bunch of wires hanging down. I just want a USB up and a power up. Um, some other mods I made. Uh, my 12 millimeter thread up in here didn't, it wasn't lined up right. It was kind of skewed, so when it would turn, it would kind of go like this. It's pretty extreme, actually. So I ended up just putting a M8 bolt through here. So up in here, there's an M8 thread. Um, well, if you're used to looking at this, if you have a stock. So you take off the little sticker, there's some screws, you take those off. And then inside there, there's enough room to accommodate an M8 bolt. Um, that comes down to about here. I don't know the distance. You'd have to measure it. I just had some threaded rod, honestly, and just cut it. Had a lock wall, uh, lock nut up in there to make my own. Um, just to avoid buying an M8 bolt. But then there's a washer, a lock washer, and then another washer to keep it all flat in there. And then this M8 coupling here. That's all jammed together so that this can rotate freely. I can put my Skywatcher Star Adventurer counterweight rod in there because that's M8 thread, and it's all perfectly straight now. So that's what I did there. Then I have this mod. I like Swiss Arca plate. I think that's what it's called. Um, this looks 
really bad because this central thing isn't actually central. It's off a little bit. I don't know why they wouldn't just make that in the middle, but I guess they didn't. And they made like a million of these, and that's all you can really find in this larger size. It's 120 millimeters. Um, it's also slightly off a little bit because of that. Messed up the measurements just a tad. So I think it actually, to be perfectly centered, needs to go that way, like 1.5 millimeters. But I'm not worrying about it right now. I just drilled these out, and then it just attaches to those holes that this attached into. Um, I like Swiss Arca because, one, I can get more, like, coverage. Um, and it's got, most of them have, like, little screws that will stop and stop it from sliding through. This just has this little contact area here. Just a little bottom of this sphere connecting. And I guess if that gets, gets loose, the, the whole dovetail is just going to slide right out. So I've never, never really been into that. Plus, it's really heavy and weighs a lot. Um, yep, and I 3D printed this little cover for the gear and stuff inside there. Um, that's it for now. I'll make more videos, I guess, when I feel like it, or when I get something worth taking a picture of. But I hope that that uh, screw fits really helps y'all uh, who need it. And, uh, yeah, enjoy. <laughs>